I wanted to start off this video by mentioning the last video I did. The one that solved the arbitrary math problem about the number of guardians that there could possibly be based on combinations. And I want to start off by admitting I forgot emotes. The emotes in Destiny 2 were not included, outright not mentioned, totally forgotten. I did not remember to include emotes in the math. And because I forgot the emotes, my math was so very, 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 very wrong. So wrong, you were all compelled to tell me I forgot the emotes about 300 times. So to make it up to you guys that watched that video and felt that you were treated by the lack of emotes, originally the answer was 6.29 times 10 to the 61 with emotes at a random ballpark guess since counting the number of emotes is impossible due to their lack of being in the api anywhere i'm going to guess there is like 50 of them so drum roll please 6.29 times 10 to the 61 changes astronomically to 3.125 times 10 to the 63 probably Enough about that, let's move on and do this video. One of the biggest complaints I've seen when it comes to the Curse of Osiris and when it came out was the fact that Mercury, the new playable area, was small. But that leads to the question that I had, how small is Mercury? Also, preemptive anti-clickbait claims here, since people decided that me titling my last video how many guardians are there somehow meant I was talking about the number of people still playing Destiny because I don't know, hate trains. When I say how big Mercury is, I mean this Mercury. Not this Mercury, this one, the one in the game. Not the real one out in space somewhere, the one in the video game called Destiny 2. I hope that clears things up and I don't get called a clickbaiter again. Let's answer the question. One of the original ideas I had to measure distance in Destiny 2 was to use the speed that the Guardian runs. All I needed was something that was a set distance away marked by some sort of distance that is commonly used, then timing it a couple times to get a more accurate time over a distance, then take that time it took to travel that distance, divide it by the number of seconds it took, and now I have a distance per second. The problem was, unlike Destiny 1, Destiny 2 lacks any sort of distance notation that is regularly available. See, in Destiny 1, patrol beacons always labeled how far away you were from them. You could pull out your ghost and be like, yep, that's 50 meters away, and then do some math, and boom, you got the size of an area. But in Destiny 2, for some reason, this was taken away, so I needed to find other means of testing distance. I asked on Twitter when I first started working on this video this question. Is there anywhere in Destiny 2 that has things marked in meters? I know in PvP you can tell how many meters away from power ammo you are, but is this found anywhere in PvE? And I got two responses, both suggesting that I use the Darcy, the exotic sniper rifle, due to the fact that when you aim down sides in an enemy, it tells you how many meters away that target is. Which was great, because now I had something to measure meters. But there was a problem. Enemies move. So even if I aimed at them from super far out and then did my initial test idea of running to them and timing how long it took to get there, by the time I got to them, they would have moved, meaning I would have to guess where they were originally standing, which is inaccurate and not how I'd like to go about things. Well, I want to be as accurate as possible, and that was not going to work, at least for me, until I remembered about these two little robot boys. These two Vex. They don't move until someone gets close, and even if someone does get close, I know where they spawned at they are always on these two pillars. And because of this, I could now start measuring how big Mercury is. I decided to measure it by going as far as away as I could in a straight line from the one on the left, and then do the same thing for the one on the right. These respectively were 136 meters away and 148 meters away. Once I had these numbers, I could then stand here and measure how far away they are, which resulted in 67 meters. With this information, I now had the width and height of two separate rectangles. I could then multiply the width and height of each of the rectangles to get their size in square meters, and then add the two of them together. This in turn gives me the actual size of this region of the map. However, you may have noticed that the central region isn't calculated. Now, I could stand on one of the platforms and measure the distance to the other. However, if I do stand here, the Vex will never spawn, and if they are spawned, they move because I got too close and they're angry at me. So I decided instead to bust out the old Pythagorean theorem and solve the side of the triangle we don't know the answer to. Now, you might be wondering, which triangle are you talking about? And I'm just gonna show you on screen now. I mean, I mean this triangle, the one, you see it, you see the three sides. 
We know from previous measurements that the Vex on the left is 67 meters away, and if we stand in the same spot, the one on the right is 68 meters away. This means for the Pythagorean Theorem, which if you don't remember is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, well, we know a is 67 meters, and we know that c equals 68 meters. We can take the 67 squared, which is 4489, and subtract it from 68 squared, which is 4624, to get 135. We then take the square root of that number and we get 11, which is B, or the distance between these two vex, or the distance between the center of these two pillars. Now we can take the very first distance of 136 meters, add it to the second distance, which we calculated to be 148, and then add it to the new number we just found, which is 11 meters, and then multiply it by the distance that we calculated third, which was 67 meters. And now we have this entire region calculated in square meters, which in this case is 19,765 meters squared. Now because we know this, we know that if we're 67 meters away in the opposite direction, we have a region that is the same size, meaning we can simply and accurately assume that this region is twice the size of the original region. However, this is where we run into problems. If we don't have line of sight on those two Vex goblins, or we're farther than 150 meters away, if either of those two things occur, we can no longer use the Darcy to calculate distance, meaning we either have to eyeball the distance or use the speed method I mentioned earlier, which to be completely honest with you guys, I didn't want to do. But then I realized something. It's around this time Interceptors spawned in, and they had a distance in meters that leads directly to them. This means I can put these anywhere on the map and start measuring everything, every nook and cranny, every inch of the map, very, very accurately. Now after measuring things for a while, I noticed something about the Mercury Patrol area. I was standing up here and noticed that it's very circular, which means I could bring another formula into play, the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. All I needed to do was find the center of the circle that is Mercury, and then measure from that point to the outer edge of the circle. This would give me the radius of the circle, and it was a matter of plugging in the numbers, and boom, I had the size of Mercury in square meters. However, before I could measure the entire circle that is the Mercury patrol area, I had to measure the diameter of the circle that is in the very center of the map. To do so, I simply had to place the interceptor on one side, and then quickly run around to the other side and look through the wall. Doing so, I then knew that the circle is roughly 85 meters across. I then ran back around to the side where the interceptor was and ran to the very edge of the map near the portal to the lighthouse and took another measurement, which turned out to be 100 meters. Then move the interceptor to the other side of the circle, run to the very edge of the map near the portal to the infinite forest and take that measurement, which ended up being 112 meters. And with this information, I had enough to do the math. I took the diameter of the inner circle, which we know is 85 meters, and added it to the other two measurements we we took 100 meters and 112 meters. This totaled in 297 meters total, but that was the diameter circle. I needed the radius, so I divided it by two, which resulted in 148.5 meters. All I had to do was plug that into the formula for the area of the circle, which as I stated earlier is a equals pi r squared, and with that we had a fairly accurate representation of the size of Mercury, being 69,279 meters squared. But you've probably guessed it but I wasn't done there. This only represents this much of Mercury. What about this area behind the lighthouse, or this area behind the portal to the infinite forest, or even this little obscure area right here that's oddly placed for extra real estate or something? I'm gonna save you guys the time. Since you guys know, I'm just gonna find the area of these circles that would exist for these half circles and then divide them by two and then add it to our original total, creating a new size of roughly 100,407 square meters. Now, just because I'm certain people will question the change from 69,000 square meters to 100,000 square meters, get ready because I'm going to show the math on screen, and it's gone. Now, 100,407 square meters seems like a decent size. However, square meters, square feet, square inches, anything sized in squares, measured in squares, does that even make... Does that even make sense? Anyway, anything in square meters seems a lot bigger than it actually is. For example, the Mercury Patrol area can fit about four times into the Vatican City. Now you might be thinking, well, Mercury is a fourth of a city, but the Vatican is small. And I mean really, really, really small. You know what? I'll show you. The state of New York is roughly 141,300 square kilometers. Not meters, but kilometers. New York City itself is roughly 1,213 square kilometers. Again, not meters, kilometers. Just to further this, one square kilometer is the same thing as one million square meters. So that means New York City is 1.23 billion square meters. Now within New York City, of course, is Central Park. And Central Park is 3,411,014.3 square meters, or roughly 843 acres. Now you're probably wondering why the heck I switched to acres, but this is just gonna make it easier for me to do math in the back end 
because the Vatican is 109 acres. You'll see. So we're in Central Park. Pretend this image represents Central Park. Well, it is a picture of Central Park, so of course it represents it. But it, I mean, pretend that this image represents the size of Central You get it? Okay, good. Now, this is the Pope. He represents the Vatican. Well, of course he does. But the size, the size thing, it, I keep doing it. This is the Pope, and each one is one whole Vatican. Well, this many Popes can fit in Central Park, and this is Mercury. Four of these can fit in the Pope, or the Vatican. You know what? This is stupid. Four Mercuries can fit in the Vatican City, and eight Vatican Cities can fit in Central Park. It's tiny, okay? And now you know how tiny. 100,400 square meters. Mercury is 100,407 square meters, and that's not, it's not very big. We knew it was tiny, but now you have a figure to describe it fairly accurately. You know what? I was curious, so I found out. I put it in a video, put it on YouTube. You found it. You were also curious, so you clicked on the video, and now we know. Do whatever you want with this. Inf do whatever you want with this. Sub subscribe.